So the ideas for my work, the, the reason I do all this stuff is because I'm constantly struck by the way familiar sites are constantly changing with the shifts in the seasons and the weather and the light. And I think it can be profoundly moving to look at something that you think you know like the back of your hand and one day you notice it's really different from the day that, that you first saw it. And I think that this kind of experience can heighten the awareness that we ourselves and our perceptions are really the thing that's always changing and that every day and hour and minute can only be seen by us once, just once. So the ideas for my work begin as memories and to help capture them in the moment I take a lot of photos as I mentioned before but it's never quite right the way the photos come out, the way the camera remembers things and you'll know what I mean if you've ever shared vacation pictures and, and you're trying to explain to your friend but it was really so much more amazing and it was so much more breathtaking this picture does not really capture that it doesn't explain well enough what I want to what do I, what I want to tell you. So I collage the photos quite often to try and get these images out of my head uh, where I can see them. And this is the start of making these images into paintings. And the process often feels like remembering the details of a dream. These many hours sometimes that go into the cutting and pasting of the photos, trying to recreate the memory of how it felt to be alive in that moment that they were taken. Was it cold or windy? You know, were there scents in the air or noise? Was I half blinded by the sun? What was it that caught my attention and sparked this urgent need to make a record? So you'll notice too, if you were looking at those collages, one or two of them are just plain photos. Uh, they're not actually collaged because sometimes just the kernel of the idea is enough to get a painting started. And you'll see too, perhaps later, uh, when we're all circulating again, if you go and find the painting that goes with the collage, you'll see that they only resemble each other in a passing way, not uh, all that closely, because the photos really are just the beginning. So on to a little discussion of the paintings themselves and how they're made. Um, the surface that you actually look at that's on top is called duralar, which is simply uh, another type of mylar. It's a, it's a polyester film, very thin, but quite crisp, and it is archival. But unlike paper, of course, it doesn't tear or shrink, and it doesn't waffle around, and it doesn't respond to humidity changes. Uh, and I like to sand this stuff. When you buy it, it's very smooth and slick. It's like running your hand over a piece of satin. So I, I sand it with sanding blocks or sanding sponges of varying grits to introduce tooth to give it uh, the so the medium will stick to it a little bit better and uh, and also to introduce random scratches I want I want there to be some kind of random marks that will only show up when the medium is applied uh, because I think it lends a kind of spontaneity to the work sometimes um, and this can happen in cooking too uh, a happy accident occurs you, you put ingredients together that you didn't mean to, or you put twice as much of something in, or half as much, and what comes out is something really glorious that you couldn't have planned. So to introduce and, and, and invite a little bit of the unplanned, I think, can be really a wonderful thing. It just adds a richness to the whole endeavor. So this top layer, this Juralar, a lot of the, the really literal marks are on this layer, either with oil paint or oil stick. Um, oil stick, by the way, is a really interesting material. Uh, a lot of you I know are artists, so a lot of you might already know what they are, but it's kind of like an oil pastel, but a pastel which cures and dries like paint, uh, unlike pastel which stays soft and can always be smeared. They're kind of like fat cigars, but you can, you can uh, sharpen them a bit. So underneath the, the Juralar, on these wooden panels, there's a painting on that layer too, which is very, very different. Doesn't look anything like the top layer. Um, and it's acrylic paint or collage. And I do this because the Juralar is kind of milky. It's like a sheer curtain. Um, and it's, it's got this wonderful translucent quality. And so whatever you put underneath influences the top layer. You can, you can almost like turn the volume up and down by 
uh, changing the tonal value of what's underneath or making it warmer or cooler. So if you saw them separately, the two layers, you'd know right away what I was talking about. The, the, only, the only downside to this is that you can never really see what's underneath, but it's, it's a mystery. It, it is there. So the works in this show are an intimate portrait of where I live, uh, but over the years, experiences traveling on trains and highways and, and visits uh, to other places like Banff, Alberta, and Copenhagen and New York have burrowed beneath my consciousness as well. And they've resurfaced as whole distinct series of work. And uh, they're all on my website, all of those uh, pieces. Thank you so much.